Hello and welcome back to World 360. What does a probe into genocide allegations against former Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina mean for India? Why has Thailand's Prime Minister been removed from office? And how can a recent decision by the UK affect the Russia-Ukraine battlefield? We answer these and more in today's episode. So first up, Bangladesh. Former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who was ousted from power earlier this month after violent protests, is now facing challenges in the legal arena. On Wednesday, Bangladesh's International Crimes Tribunal started an investigation against Hasina and nine others on charges of genocide and crimes against humanity during protests that took place in the country from 15th July to 5th August. Over 300 people died during the protests, including many young students. After Hasina's ouster, countries like the US, UK and Canada called for investigations into the student deaths. Apart from Hasina, others who face charges are Awami League General Secretary and former Road Transport and Bridges Minister Ubaidul Kadir, former Home Minister Asad Duzin Aman Khan Kamal, and other top ministers, state ministers, and high ranking officials. So, who filed a petition to the Bangladesh Tribunal alleging Hasina and others plotted quote unquote genocide? The petition was filed by Bulbul Kabir, the father of a young student who was killed during the recent student protests. Another complaint was filed with this tribunal on Friday against Hasina, again by the father of a student who was shot dead during the protests. Now, what does all of this mean for India? Sheikh Hasina is currently taking refuge in India and should the new interim government in Bangladesh seek her extradition, New Delhi will then be nudged to play a role. It remains to be seen whether the new interim government in Bangladesh, led by Mohammad Yunus, a Nobel laureate, will put in an extradition request with India demanding Hasina's return. And it also remains to be seen how India handles that situation should it crop up. In fact, Bangladesh Foreign Minister Mohammad Tawhid Hussain, in an interview with Reuters, had said Hasina's stay in India has created an embarrassing situation for the Indian government. Let's not forget that Bangladesh's International Crimes Tribunal, where these petitions have been lodged against Hasina, was formed in 1973 to investigate Bangladeshis believed to have collaborated with Pakistan during the 1971 war. The tribunal itself was formed after Bangladesh passed the International Crimes Tribunal Act in 1973. Currently, the advisor to the tribunal is Brigadier General Retired DM Sakhavat Hussain, who is also part of the 17-member interim government in Bangladesh that took oath following Hasina's ouster. Now, Hussain is a former election commissioner who once called Hasina a classic autocrat. He was also vocal about the mishandling of the recent student protests in which many died. He told BBC at the time, police were exhausted we heard that they didn't have adequate ammunition. So what's the timeline on this investigation before the tribunal? Well, so far, a Dhaka court has asked the police to submit a case or rather a report of the case by September 15th. And this is mainly over the death of a grocery shop owner in police firing in Dhaka on July 19th. The other cases and petitions are yet to be seen. We've also seen how the new interim government led by Mohammad Yunus has begun a crackdown on the Awami League and Hasina. Earlier this week, the new government also scrapped National Morning Day on 15th August, marking the assassination of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Bangladesh's founding father and the father of Sheikh Hasina. For our second topic, we're looking at Thailand, where Prime Minister Shreta Tavisan has been removed from office. Now, a 37-year-old daughter of a former Prime Minister, Taksin Shinavatra, has been elevated to the position. She was elected by Thai lawmakers this week and her father, Shinavatra, was ousted and exiled in a 2006 coup. This is an interesting turn of events given that the former Prime Minister has been playing a critical political role behind the scenes in Thailand for a few years now. In fact, in a recent episode on 11th May of World 360, we talked about how Thaksin was holding meetings with representatives of Myanmar's opposition groups and not its junta. At the time, the Thailand government's Committee on National Security and Border Affairs warned that Thaksin's meetings with these groups in Myanmar could cause confusion. 
The foreign minister had also at the time said Thaksin met these groups in his own capacity and not on behalf of the Thai government. Now, let's fast forward to today, or rather this week. On Thursday, a Thai court ruled in favour of dismissing the current Prime Minister of Thailand, Tavisin, who I mentioned, arguing that he lacked honesty and breached ethical standards by appointing someone with a criminal conviction to his cabinet. This appears to be the latest round in a brewing battle between Thailand's military, its pro-monarchy establishment and populist parties in the country. Now, who is the controversial figure that caused PM Tavisan his premiership? That would be former lawyer Pichit Chunban. Pichit served in the Prime Minister's office between 27th April and 21st May this year, just about a month. He had previously served as a lawyer to Thaksin, the former PM, but he has a checkered past. In 2008, Pichit was involved in a bribery scandal and sentenced to six months in jail. He and a few others were convicted on contempt of court charges for allegedly attempting to bribe Supreme Court officials. He reportedly handed Supreme Court officials a lunchbox containing 2 million baht. At the time, Pichit was representing Thaksin and his wife in a land deal case. Now, Thaksin's removal from office appears to be part of a larger power struggle just days after a court dissolved the country's main opposition party. It appears the old guard in Thailand is flexing its muscles and Shinavatra, once exiled in the 2006 coup, is getting closer to taking back the reins. For our last topic, we're looking at a recent decision by the UK which could affect the Russia-Ukraine battlefield. Previously, the UK had allowed Ukraine to use donated British weapons to strike targets from within Ukraine. But now the new Labour government in the UK has allowed Ukraine's use of the donated weapons by its ground forces on Russian territory. This means that British tanks, anti-tank missiles and other military equipment given to Ukraine can be used inside Russia as part of Ukraine's ground operations. This, however, excludes the use of long-range Storm Shadow missiles. The Storm Shadow is a long-range air-launched cruise missile jointly developed by France and the UK. This is a powerful missile and has been credited with a number of successful Ukrainian strikes against Moscow. For example, Ukraine used these missiles to strike a Russian warship and submarine in Crimea in September last year. This blew up the headquarters of the Russian Black Sea Fleet in Sevastopol, which was seen as a major blow to Moscow. But again, this won't be allowed, this particular missile won't be allowed in Ukraine's ground forces operations, but can only be launched from within Ukraine's borders. However, other donated British weapons and military equipment, including the British Challenger 2 tanks, will now enter the battlefield in a major way. Thanks for watching. This is Pia Krishankoti for The Print.